We would like to greet everybody with the peace of the Lord Jesus, especially you who visit us and honor us with your presence tonight with us in the service. At this moment, we shall begin our service by praying by the blood of Jesus. And the church may kneel down in reverence to the Lord, but uh, and we shall show our dependence on the Lord by prayer. You who visit us, you may remain as you wish to be, but the church shall close. Uh, we ask that you all close your eyes in reverence. Lord, our Father, we pray by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. When we present ourselves before you and our lives as needy of your forgiveness and grace, reach us, Lord, in this service with your power and Sanctify each one of us so that we may praise you with songs. We ask for a blessing for each home and life in this night. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. The brethren may be seated. And I would like to have us sing a song of prayer. And I invite the visitors to sing with us tonight.
And now that we have been forgiven by the power of the blood of Jesus, I would like to invite everybody to praise the Lord with one more song, which we shall sing now. Brethren, at this moment, where we are in social reclusion, we would like to say some things where the Lord has answered our prayers. We would like to ask a pastor to pray. Lord, we intercede at this moment, so difficult in this pandemic, where your people throughout the world have been going through. We pray that the Lord may order his angels to guard, to deliver his people from this evil. We pray for our friends and brethren who are at the front of this battle of COVID-19, of this sickness, that the Lord may guard our brethren, that he may protect their children under the hand of the Lord, deliver them from all evil and give them victory. 
because the Lord is the all-powerful God, we pray and intercede in the name of Jesus. Amen. I invite the brethren to open their words to the second letter of from Paul to Timothy, chapter 4. We shall read verses 6 until verse 9. This verse shall also be placed on the screen to facilitate the following of everybody. And so says the word of the Lord. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight, I have finished the race, I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up, up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day, and not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly. Brethren, this text from the letter of Paul to Timothy speaks of a moment where Paul spoke in spirit that the time of his coming had was at hand. He was at the end of his career, a long walk which he made before the presence of the Lord. He spoke to Timothy his last orientations because Timothy was young and he was worried about teaching Timothy and how Timothy would conduct the church. But he also spoke of a special moment with, uh, of his leaving. He had a long career. He had dedicated himself to the Lord throughout his life. Since he had encountered the Lord and the light in the path to Damascus, he came to the brethren, and when he was passing through the path of Damascus to persecute the Jews, the Lord showed himself upon him through a light, and Paul had fallen to the ground and became blind. Ever since that day, Paul had taken an important direction in his life, to serve the Lord, not to just give himself to the Lord, but to completely change himself. And he did not, had no doubts of if he would continue in his religion or his doubts or his thoughts. He broke himself off completely from his human reasons. And he broke himself off, brethren, from his religious beliefs, from the culture and his reason that he had learned before. All of this remained behind in that day and now in this text which I read to the brethren he shows his last words his last words existed in a mix of joy and certainty joy in brethren having have reached his end protected by God and being carried by the hands of the Lord throughout his life, he went through many battles and now had reached the end and the certainty of an eternal life with Jesus. This was the difference, and it, it is interesting that I would like to tell you, brethren, that Paul never before had ever mentioned the time of departure. But, uh, although the word many times says that he passed through difficulties that were extremely serious he was uh, for example he had moments where he was whipped and he had not written that it was the departure he was his ship sunk but he did not write that it was the departure he had situations in danger many times throughout a storm for many days the storm worsened and worsened by day but he did not write at that moment that he had reached his end. And, it, and even he was even bitten by a serpent. And the people around him, when he, they saw that, they thought he would die. Not even then, not even in that extreme situation, 
Did he understand that it was his time? But in this moment, he discerned through the Holy Spirit, Paul wrote to Timothy, My time has come. Brethren, the words of Paul speak of a prophetic moment, and we as the church who have reached the revelation also see this letter from Paul to Timothy saying goodbye to us was familiar because the church in these moments we live in the church looks back and sees its career the church has been going for 2,000 years from that beginning similar to what happened to Paul where they encountered the light in the path to where he encountered the light in the path to Damascus, this church, which is in spirit, also had this encounter with a light. Different, because what happened with her was that she was baptized by the Holy Spirit, and the group and and the day of Pentecost, fire and light happened. She was baptized with the Holy Spirit, being prepared by the Lord for the beginning of a great journey, a great walk. And the church would pass through moments, but the knowledge of the prophecy that it obtained in revelation through the Holy Spirit, that it permitted the church at the end of this path to look back at everything it passed through and understand, as Paul did, the moment of departure of the church. The church had a journey of 2,000 years. It passed through many battles. It passed through moments of extreme difficulty. And after the baptism with the Holy Spirit, it went out to evangelize and was prosecuted. It was thrown into the arenas, into the fires, into the crosses. And through the throughout Rome, there were not enough trees to crucify Jews anymore and we understand her journey and even before that the word was hidden it had no nobody had contact with the word it was mixed and passed through a moment of quiet but now in this special moment before all these signs that occur in our days and they are so clear to see Brethren, the faithful church, with the help of the Holy Spirit, similar to Paul, now discerns the moment that it's so special for her. And we tell everybody here who listens to us, the time of our departure has come. Maranatha for us means this, the time of our departure. The Lord Jesus shall return to help us reach heaven. For the end of our career, the signs surround us and they tell us that we live in a moment of crisis. And it's easy to see what we pass through, the world that lives in crisis. Nature is destroyed. The signs of the gospel have all been completed. There exists not a signal for the church different to the rapture that needs to happen. Absolutely not. All of them have been completed. The world is in the arms of a Christianism which cannot show the way. And our work here does not criticize religions, but it is to show the brethren the truth. People are surrounded by these things, but the word here is a word of hope. It is a word of salvation, a word of consolation. Brethren, even though so many things happen and we suffer so greatly together, we are here together and we can discern that all these difficulties throughout the world 
are signs that our departure comes nearer. In his coming nearer in the certainty of Paul is our certainty. He ended his career and he said to Timothy, I have ended my career and kept my faith. The church also throughout these 2000 years is ending her career and it has kept her faith. But it is incomprehensible to the human eyes, but it quenches the thirst of the soul. Brethren, the only thing that quench can quench the thirst of the, of the soul of man is the revelation through the Holy Spirit. No other thing exists to satisfy our thirst. To you who visit, visits us, you may thirst for the truth. There is no other way other than the revelation of Jesus Christ, where the Lord reveals himself into your heart. And so the thirst of your soul is satisfied. Brethren, the Holy Spirit comforts us in this moment that we pass through. It consoles us in moments of pain and grief and sorrow. It has sustained the church until now and will continue to sustain us in this difficult path, showing us in this moment that Jesus is coming. And the certainty of Paul is our certainty. And I would like to finish this telling the brethren that now we are able to receive from the hand of the judge the crown of life. And the word says that not us, or just simply us, but all those who love Jesus Christ. A career is not an adventure. Paul says, I've ended my career. It was no adventure, adventure of one day where you receive a blessing from the Lord and then that's it. This is not what the career is. Career is has a beginning, a middle and an end. A career has a project. Salvation is a project of God revealed through the word. Not to give mankind a religion or give mankind a church. Much more than this. To give, uh, not to give mankind just a blessing or a house. Much more than this. To rescue mankind and take him back to eternity. To take mankind back to heaven. And I would like to end this word telling the brethren the same thing that Paul told Timothy. When he said that his time had come to an end, he said, The time of my coming is near. He said to Timothy the following, Seek to join me quickly. I would like to make an appeal to you who visits us, who gives us the honor of having your presence here in the service. I would like to tell, to give you the same appeal. Seek to join us quickly. If you have, if you need Jesus, if you need a blessing in your home, if your home needs to be restored and your heart thirsts, listen. Join us quickly for we are near to leaving. At any moment, we shall be removed from this world to be forever in the arms of our Savior, to enjoy our salvation which He gave to us on the cross of Calvary. Come quickly and seek to be with us. It's not just uh, us imposing to you or giving you an order. We are inviting you. Not an invitation to be in the Maranatha Christian Church. Not this. An invitation to great salvation which is coming near. Come and seek to be with us quickly. Timothy, if you have something that bothers you, if something traps you, remove this from yourself and join me, Paul said. This is an appeal that I give to you. We live in times where we must liberate ourselves from that which holds us to this world. 
I don't know what traps you or what traps others. But this is the appeal. Remove these things from yourself and come quickly. Join Jesus. For the time of our leaving has come. The final moment of the church, which is before the rapture, and the church does not want to leave alone. It wants to take all. It's an invitation that it makes to you and to all families to join the together in the presence of the Lord. Glory to Jesus. Brethren, at this moment, where we are separated physically, pastors have sent their letters, and we call them pastoral letters that the pastor sent to their churches. 
and these letters are well received. They lighten our hearts and demonstrate our love and care for our flock. At this moment, we would like to see a few pastoral letters that were sent to the churches. Pastoral letter from Pastor Walter Santos Leite to the brethren of uh, Bayo Saudade, Januba, Minas Gerais. Peace of the Lord Jesus. In social isolation, many circumstances generate anxiety and affliction. But let us take refuge in the Lord because our prayers are heard. And so His presence makes itself real and alive in us, giving us peace and securing victory. Exodus 33:14. And He said, My presence will go with you and I will give you rest. A fraternal hug to all. Pastoral letter from Pastor Luiz Eugenio Rosario Santos to the brethren of the church in Jardim Camburi 3, Vitória Espírito Santo. Beloved brethren, I await that you all have good physical and spiritual health. I greet the deacon body, the workers, the ladies, the, the men, the youth, adolescents, and especially the children, which enjoy our services so well with daily prayers and songs which speaks to the depth of the soul. We remember in our prayers, brah, Sister Jessica, who is pregnant, and we pray, uh, praise the Lord for the birth of uh, Joseph, son of Sister Poliana. And we would also like to uh, congratulate Brother Sizu and his wife, Jantira, with their 70 years of uh, being married and also with our brethren Siskini and Maria for their 62 years of being married together. And the brethren who were baptized in the final baptism of 2020 before the pandemic, Isabella, Lillian, Gabriel, Estevo, Lucas, Monica, and Carlos, that they may remain firm in the faith in Jesus Christ. The mind is the thirst of the great conflicts of mankind. It does not know why it's born, lives, or dies, Pastor Gideon But you have the light, John 12:36. But not all have faith, the Second Thessalonians 3:2. For you are connected to, because it is connected to obedience, which is for the faithful. The same way that our brethren from the primitive church. Let us hold fast the confessions of our hope, without wavering. For he who promised is faithful. Hebrew 10.23 Brethren, in these final moments of the service, we would like to not waste the opportunity to pray with the families. In this important moment, if you'd like to, you may kneel down in your home or however you wish to remain, but ask for a blessing from the Lord because the Lord has a blessing for your family, for your heart, and for your home. In this final moment, let us pray. I invite you all to close your eyes and be in the presence of the Lord. Lord, our Father, we pray once more by the power that is in the blood of Jesus. When we place before you, Lord, each home represented in this service in your presence, we pray that your good hand of power may be extended over these homes over these places that the Lord may fulfill the needs in this time of trials we pass through. Lord, we pray for each heart. Take care of your people under your hand and guard them under your protection, under your faithful eye of mercy. We pray for the work in Brazil and abroad as well, and that in all places where your servants may gather, May your grace not be lacking, your love and your care. And in your name we would like to say that the saving grace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God our eternal Father, and the sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit may be poured out upon all those who await the coming of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Brethren, there is a phone number which is uh, being used for visitors who wish to speak 
of about the word or ha- seek some advice or prayer. And if you are able to, then call the number, pass it to your friends, because uh, the church is at uh, your disposal. The presbytery has uh, set out to do exactly this 24-7 calls availability so that whoever may need it, they may receive the word. And we are happy to attend to your needs. And may the Lord bless you.